Sailing Home by Colin Thompson and Matt Otley. On Saturday, it rained. The sky grew dark as night and the air so wet you could almost drink it. No one could re remember rain like it. Peter and his sister sat watching the rain. It was restless weather with nothing to do. On Sunday, it was still raining. The roads ran like rivers past the house and into the sea. Peter's granny, who I lived for, ever sat by the door with her feet in a big bucket. Just in case the tide comes in, she said. All night it rained, and in the kitchen, they sat at the table and watched his ball float across the floor. Brock, too, upstairs and slept deep in their beds. Rock to and fro in wonderful dreams, Peter sailed around the world. In the morning, they all woke late to see nothing but sea. During the night, the tide had risen and carried them slowly away. Everyone climbed onto the roof to look for land, but the horizon was flat and blue, as far as the eye could see. Where do you think we are? said Alice. Who cares? said Granny. Let's have a swim. Never mind all, all that, said Peter's dad. I'm two hours late for work. Peter realized that he and Alice were two hours late for school, but he didn't say anything. For several weeks, they drifted with no sign of land. Granny swam with dolphins and fabulous creatures that circled the house, while Peter and his dad sat on the balcony and fished. And then at last, mountains appeared on the horizon. The sea grew reckless, the sun fled, the air blew wild and cold. Penguins huddled together on the front Randa, as a terrible hurricane, carried the house past Patagonia, where furious rocks made the water boil and bury the mountains in mist. The family sat in the dining room while the storm played with the house, like a toy boat. Although they hadn't seen land for weeks, and had missed the feeling of grass beneath their feet. The, this isolated land was no place for people. At last, the storm blew away and they began to drift northwards. The sky cleared, the air grew warm again, and they came to rest in an empty sea where the whales were singing. For eight days, the house sat absolutely still. They saw no ships, no planes, and no balloons. If we don't do something, said Peter's mother, we could be stuck here forever. Granny couldn't see anything wrong with that. I like it here, she said. It's quite nice and quiet. Why don't we make a sail, said Alice. The wind's bound to come eventually. So they took all the sheets off the beds and stitched them together and tied them up between the chimneys. Then at last the faintest breeze caught them and they began to move. They sailed past Tristan da Cunha, where a great volcano sat and fumed. It was such a tiny place so far from everywhere that Peter couldn't find it in his atlas. Among beautiful islands shone all day long and the sea was as warm as a bath, they tied the house to a palm tree and set foot on dry land. For the first time in months that evening, they swam with turtles in a clear moonlight lagoon.
Maybe we could stop here, said Granny, and get a hotel. This is not a place to stay, said Peter's mother. This is just a place to rest. So they sailed on through a thousand tropical islands. The word went ahead, and wherever they went, people were waiting to greet them. Kings and queens sat at their table, paddling their feet in the water, and had afternoon tea. The wind turned and carried them south. They left the islands behind, and after a peaceful week of sailing, they returned home. A fleet of tiny boats towed them through the harbor, and a line of trucks pulled them ashore until once again the house was sitting in the middle of its garden. It's going to be a bit dull here after our wonderful journey, said Peter's mother as they hung the downstairs carpet out to dry. We should have stayed in the South Sea Islands, said Peter's granny. Maybe we'll go back one day, said Alice. It was a perfect autumn day. But far out to sea, just on the edge of the horizon, was a thin line of clouds. Peter looked out of the window and watched the clouds. As they rolled and tumbled against the golden sky, they rose up like dark trees and they had made a forest. They threw thin lining into the sea and began to roll towards the town. They, that afternoon it rained. The sky grew dark as night and the air so wet you could almost drink it. They all remembered the last time it rained like that. Maybe we'll go back soon, said Peter for all of those suffering from drought. 